Peace and bless. This is the numbers game and the 9-11 planes. And this is dedicated to uh, one of the truthers out there. Yeah, that, uh, a lot of folks have uh, got turned on to and it's helped spark a lot of thought in me and I'm sure in other truthers. So he, he plays a, a valuable part in this army. So we just want to give our, our, our prayers and our good energy, good vibrations out to uh, Australia's own surfer. And uh, let that be that. We put it in the hands of the most high. We don't think the worst first. Don't do that about me. Y'all don't see me for a minute. Y'all better believe I'm ducking and dodging. But the numbers game and the 9-11 planes, and that's what I believe about him. I believe he's ducking and dodging. Right on, bro. Do that. Uh, this was partially inspired by Jungle Surfer, but uh, more so uh, by Prince. Because I heard a lot of people talking about the 777 game in the, in the numbers game. But I never heard this before, and I've been seeing this now for a couple of years. Think, consider Prince song 777-9311, and then consider the three planes that hit the buildings, we're told. We're told because we don't know what hit the buildings, if anything. We know that there were charges set off that were actually uh, planted there by one of the Bush family's companies. And that's what really took the, took the uh, plane, the, took the buildings down. Planes can't take down buildings like that. And if you don't know about that, I don't know what to say for you. That's old news. But um, 7, 7, 93 and 11 was the three planes that we heard so much about on that faithful day. Fateful day, 9-11, September 11th, uh, and 9 minus 1 minus 1 is 7. But, so we want to look at the 7 again, because we've done a lot of, of, we've heard a lot of research done on the 9-11 thing, and even some good stuff done on the 7-7 thing, and what you want to do is watch Jungle Surfer, the Flaming Sword 777 Code. Again, that's by... Uh, Jungle Surfer on YouTube. Check it out. He's got some good stuff. But anyway, the numbers game in the 911 plane. 777. Of course, if we add it up, 7 plus 7 plus 7 equals 21, which is 12 backwards. Need some visual for this. I don't know if y'all will be able to see it in the sun. All right, 7 plus 7 plus 7 equals 21, but then also the 9 plus 3 equals 12. So you've got 12 in both examples, and then of course you have 11. So we're really looking at, at, at a, a, a symbolism centering around yes the 777 we're going to go more into that but into 11 and 12 the 11th hour and the 12th hour because we're talking about the new world order versus the old world order the time is ticking away the clock is running out we will reach the midnight hour and yes i did the song the midnight man under under, under the demonic influence i wrote that song I wrote the hook and the little girl that we chose to sing the hook ended up dead she got uh, uh, hit by a hit and run car crossing Greenfield Road in Detroit, Michigan, right off of Puritan. Uh, when I stayed over that way, and it was in the in the height of the song, the song was getting played on the radio, getting a lot of attention, and I didn't pay no payola for that, and it, it just seemed to supernaturally take off. But uh, yeah, she 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 uh, was to be my sacrifice had I continued on further. That, that would have actively made it so. But uh, by the grace and the mercy of the Most High, he snatched me from out of the jaws of the enemy and took me away from that destiny, which was not for me, wasn't the best for me. And, uh, you know, he, he must have saved her from uh, that satanic demonic industry that she was headed for because she was a bad singer and she was only 14. And that song is uh, um, memorialized forever, you know, memorializes her only performance. And, uh, you know, peace and blessings uh, be upon her soul. But, uh, yes, uh, and, and the other member of the group, he ended up in the psych ward. Only by the grace of God, there go I. But we're looking at 777 and 93 and 11. Well, 11 is one hour left in the old day, right? It's also the twins. We're back to Gemini and Janus again. Rebirth, because the numbers get reborn again after 11, right? Nine is really the highest number then you have one plus zero right so we have the one and the zero zero being nothing but a state of existence which is nothingness 
but the the double ones one begins again one is the one is the loneliest number but one is symbolic of a single birth so it's a rebirth from out of the nothingness of zero the one and the zero and then of course we have 10 representing the yod in the hebrew in the hebraic uh, number system the, the number letter system the letters are numbers and the 10 is the yod uh, um, where they get uh in the uh, Rastafarian belief system, which is somewhat Hebraic in its roots, in some ways, they get uh, calling God Yod. You've heard it if you've heard um, uh, we jamming. That's what Bob Marley and them say. We jamming right straight from Yod. Okay, and uh, uh, we know that they say Jah, but yet you know it, that's an acknowledgement that Jah or Yah is represented by the Yod, the Yod ten. Okay. So uh, also, hmm, the twins, eleven. We we gonna we gonna heavyweight jam. Please believe we are. Uh, okay, the eleven representing a lot of things. Skipping over the, the nine eleven was of course representing a uh, Freeman fly of the Freeman perspective. Helped to break this down uh, in excellent uh, videos that he's done on that uh, prior to his getting. Uh, drawn in and sucked in by the disney corporation who he went hard on i guess a little too much a few too many times but uh he talked about 9 11 representing nine as man 10 as god and 11 as wizardry or man becoming god and so 9 11 was a way to skip over god numerically nine being man 10 being god 11 being man as god and it was skipping over the 10 being god Taking man straight from manhood to wizardry to godhood uh, without the use of God, which is a Crowleyan concept. Both 9-11 and 7-7-7 are Crowleyan concepts. Crowley wrote a book called 7-7-7. Who was Aleister Crowley? If you don't know, you should know. Aleister Crowley is the most influential occultist of all time. And his writings and teachings have shaped much of pop culture all around you the logos the songs the artists that you love they've studied Crowley maybe you should know a little bit about your enemy if you really call yourself a fighter in this good fight that we supposed to fight as believers how can you fight if you don't even know your enemy or anything about them get real so 777 equals 21 which is 12 backwards and 12 is the midnight or final hour the manifesting of a new day the New World Order is about creating a new day. The 11th hour, the final hour. And 12 midnight is the new day. So you find 7779311 was not just some numbers randomly picked by Prince. And we know that uh, we, we related Prince very well to Project Janus. He is the epitome. He epitomizes Project Janus more than Tupac ever could. Uh, because he was all about it. Controversy was all about it, the duality the double the twin nature not only was he a gemini but he married a set of twins it was only publicized that he married maite the one of the two twins and they had a baby and he told oprah he didn't want to talk about what happened to that baby well that brings us to the story of darth plagius the wise you should do a wikipedia search find out what george lucas a student of crawleyism said about darth plagius in his story and it had to do with of course, the uh, the um, desire for success by a parent so much that they will sacrifice their children. And many of you do that without ever signing a contract or belonging to a brotherhood. You desire success so much that you have ignored and effectively sacrificed your children unto ball, unto the ways of the world. This world ran by Lucifer. As the scripture tells us, he is the prince of this world. Let's keep heavyweight jamming. We ain't gonna stop. Now, of course, on 7-7, there was a famous bombing that occurred in Britain. And they considered that their 9-11. Isn't that interesting? So again, the Crowleyan number system coming up in both uh, the old world and the new world, America, right? Also, the uh, plane accident of the Boeing 777 Flight 214, which 2 plus 1 plus 4 is 7. The accident occurred on 7-7 in San Francisco, home of the Bohemian Grove. Home of the Grove. And it made me think back to when I was fixated 
hypnotically to playing San Andreas Grand Theft Auto. Yes, yes, me with my old self. Well, I guess I was. Oh, this is my early 30s when that came out. You're too old to be playing video games in your early 30s like that. Like that. I mean, check it out, play it, you know, see see what it's about. But I was fixated with that San Andreas game. And yes, The Grove was, was the gang uh, that was the star of the show, of that video game. And of course, we know that game was created by who? Rockstar Games, and their symbol is a pentagram. Let's keep heavyweight jamming, jam, jam. All right, so Zane is the seventh letter of the Greek... Uh, excuse me, the seventh letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it represents the Greek Zeta. Okay, uh, A to Zeta, Alpha to Zeta, right? And so 777 would be uh, ZZZ or Zigzag Zig. I know some of the wise and civilized brothers understand that. Or SSS, why? Well, well, what is a Z? The Z ain't nothing but an S backward, right? And exact, is it? Is it not? Can y'all see that? I can't even see what you can see. It's too sunny. Thank goodness for the sun. But again, 777 is Z, Z, Z. S, S, S. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Okay? A S is a Z backwards. Even the same sound. The word sin in the Bible. The Israelites were lost in the garden, excuse me, in the wilderness of where? And that's spelled in both ways in your King James. You can find it both ways. The same wilderness spelled both ways. This is a betrayal to the secrecy of the spell of spelling. They make mistakes, y'all. That's why we got to study their writings. We got to study everything that they put out here that's relevant because you'll find mistakes. Don't think that they're all powerful. They will and must make mistakes. Now, Prince is playing a game, and it's a duality thing. He's playing a game like a black hero. And he's not the first Gemini to do it, and he won't be the last. But why do they like to pick Gemini? Patti LaBelle is a Gemini. Somebody loves you, baby. And that's one of them songs. That's one of them songwriter secret songs. Please believe it. Patti was quite involved. She made the whore song, Lady Marmalade, which was about a New Orleans whore, who used, of course, New Orleans whores were well-versed in the black craft. Come on, let's heavyweight jam. All right, so of course we know uh, Prince was a Gemini, and Project Janus is all about the Gemini theory, the uh, uh, Janus or the genius, the Jinn, the air spirit. Of course, Gemini is an air sign, and a good old Prince knew about the bombings before they happened. We have seen him live performing on stage, telling the crowd overseas, "I gotta go, y'all. I gotta get back to America, y'all." I got to get ready for the bomb. Osama bin Laden getting ready to bomb. We saw him do that. We know he did that. We saw it live in full effect. Come here. Come here, pretty girl. Come here, pretty girl. They was worried about you. They was worried that you get fed. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he said it live. <laughs> and yeah, she about to eat. We all about to eat. We barbecuing. We not meal doing. But he said it live on stage. He let it be known that uh, he knew that the bombs was getting ready to drop before it happened. You can you, you used to find that footage on YouTube. Some things have been pulled. As we get hip to things, as our coats get pulled, certain videos get pulled right along with them. But uh, Prince, you know, he's he's playing this role. You know, he goes on uh, Tavis Smiley, who's got to be him and, I'm sorry, you know, him and Dr. West have got to be Boule. Uh, controlled opposition perhaps they believe what they're saying because see that's the best controlled opposition is the opposition that really believes what they're saying that's the best so I'm not saying that they don't believe what they're saying and, it, and that they're not sincere but uh, their agenda has been tainted because of the brotherhoods that loom over their heads that at the end of the day control their behaviors and will approve or disapprove or, or disapprove of what they do. They'll keep them from saying certain things and allow them to say others. So at the end of the day, how 100 can you be when you're tied and connected to frats and sororities? And if you're a university man, Dr. West, or if you're a um, former collegiate 
student, uh, you know, if you have an alma mater uh, from one of the great HBCs or one of America's great universities, you probably pledged. And if you pledged, then you owe your allegiance to that body still to this day. So when he go, when Prince goes on Tavis Smiley and talks about Kim Trails and he's lightweight jamming, you think, oh, Prince is for us. He didn't say nothing that was about nothing. He didn't he didn't move no earth. He didn't rock no jaws. We heavyweight jamming, breaking all the laws. So Prince did a secret gig in Melbourne, Australia. And also Prince did a secret gig with Rick Perry, former um, uh, uh, governor and presidential nominee from Texas. He ran against Obese in uh, 2018. Well, he ran really against Romney. He was one of the Republican candidates. He didn't make it, but he was very Bush-esque, and he represented Texas, and we know Texas is Bush country. I knew some guys, uh, 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 rest in peace to them brothers now, who was big in the game, and I mean the street game, the dope game, and they would get work from Texas, like a lot of brothers in Detroit did, and, you know, we talk Illuminati talk, and they would tell me about how the work would be stamped from time to time with bush face it'd be a bush face on their work that came from texas or it'd be a cobra commander symbol can't make this stuff up i wouldn't do it anyway i have no reason to lie to you so yes we know that the the 777 being the seventh letter in the hebrew would be zig 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 zag zig or zzz which if you turn it around is sss and of course we know uh flight 77 and 77 itself is a big time uh, Illuminati number. Why the accident occurred on 77. Okay. Um, and that is also SS. Like the Nazi SS. And you know that the Nazis were run by the Thule Society. Which was a German occultic society. Uh, connected to uh, Blavatskyan and um, Crowleyan philosophies. And they would have known about the 777 book and the power the so-called power behind using the zigzag or the the zz zz top make you think about them huh? make you wonder why they had such such a one hit wonder why they had that big hit song and then the ss not just the nazi ss but all the times you see ss throughout government how important it is secret service social security what grady say it ain't enough to get social on and the show ain't gonna make you secure but uh a little Fred Sanford there for you. So 777 is also the jackpot. If you uh, play at the Motor City Casino or Greek Town Casino or uh, uh, MGM Casino Grand, you will find on the slot machines, you, you hit three sevens, that's the jackpot. And also to play one of the popular games there that, that uh, you might could actually win, and that's Black Jack, and that's 777 equals 21. Let's keep on. Heavyweight jamming. All right, now, uh, Crowley's book 777 deals with self mutilation and the tree of life. The phantom path of the tree of life. And that phantom path, uh, uh, <laughs> or that phantom menace, <laughs> again, and you know the you know I'm laughing because I'm looking at the paper like how did I get from here to here? And I know y'all y'all got to be listening sometimes like how is he getting from here to here? No, it ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost with the most, cause I am not smart. Thank you, thank you, Almighty Yah. God, my tongue and my heart and my mind have been aligned with Your will. Shrink me and increase. All right, as we go hard on the beast and tear him piece by piece. So the Phantom Menace. Star Wars was full of crawly themes. Father and son sacrifice. I'm your father, Luke. He was about to kill Luke too. He's gonna do him in. Uh, brother and sister sex. Luke and Leia was brother and sisters, twins at that, right? Duality, Project Janus, and they end up in, uh, you know, embracing each other and kissing. There was love interest in the first one, and that goes back to the Dagon and um, uh, the H.G. Wells Dagon, uh, a book turned turned to movie, where that was a big theme in that that um, in order to consummate certain satanic uh, rituals and to tear the veil by doing something super ill the iller the, uh, the thing you do especially sexually the more you tear the the veil the fabric of time and space 
the reality around you and you open up portals you vibrate in such a way or you create such a vibration around you where extra dimensional entities are able to step from their dimension the fifth dimension like the group into the fourth and the third and then be in you and so these megalomaniacs desire to have these old ones come into their body they desire the fire uh, the inspire the inspire aspire getting in them a spirit getting in them inspire they aspire to be inspired until they expire to the spirit leave oh we oh we heavyweight chairman can you feel it nothing can save you all right so hayden christensen was the star of phantom menace and also of jumpers phantom path and jumpers he was jumping from dimension to dimension and he started in Phantom Menace. And he started in Vanishing on 7th Street, which was supposed to take place in Detroit City. 7th Street again. And the rebirth number again, 11. We got the 7-7 seven, seven and the 11. Even in that, because what, what what's the 11? 11 represents the rebirth or a renaissance. And Detroit is known as the Renaissance City. And Isaiah Thomas number. Mm, 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 mm. And the boule kiss between him and who? What Johnson? What kind of Johnson? It wasn't so magical now, was it? Yes, it was quite magical. It must have been quite a magical Johnson. Because for some reason, everybody else's Johnson uh, doesn't get cured and his did. So he sure did have a magic Johnson. And his number, his number, and Isaiah's number, both significant to the, um, to the ritual magic that we know that these witchcraft, uh, doing no good by boule suckers involve themselves in and the uh, Crowley uh, masters that they serve because they nothing but peons so Isaiah had to kiss magic and magic had to kiss Isaiah back and it was a premonition too to the gay stuff that was uh, or the AIDS fiasco that would follow and um, the same thing that you see with Wayne kissing baby or with the La Cosa Nostra and the gangster kiss between mobsters. Whew. This is too hard for the boulevard. All right. Now in the movie Jumper, Hayden Christensen, who don't play in a lot of movies, I, I've said that before, Hayden Christensen creeps me out. And so does um, Susan Rice. She creeps me out and so did Condoleezza. Condoleezza Rice, she creeped me out. But in the movie Jumper, Hayden Christensen played a character named David Rice. So it was talking about the Rice family and their ability to transcend by using this magic from dimension to dimension. That's what the movie was really based about. Ow! Oh, who is the Rice family? I don't know. One of the, one of the 13 or one of the unknown. Because there's more than 13 families and all of the 13 families that are listed cannot be all of the actual 13 families. Because you would have to know and believe that some of them are still shrouded in secrecy at this time. But all things done in the darkness shall be brought to the light, according to the scripture. And Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, said that uh, nothing is hidden except that it will be revealed. So Condoleezza Rice, big shot, right, right after her comes Susan Rice. And we're not supposed to think it's, it, it's any relationship between them. It's just coincidence. Or is it coincide? It's like interfere. It's has to do with interfering. Infer. Ints has to do with inferring. Coincide. Ints has to do with coinciding. But you see it coincidence and that is to take away the meaning, the true meaning. is part of the spell of spelling, the spelling spell that they drop down on you and the spell of, uh, uh, and the dictionary that goes along with the spell of span, spelling, which should be called the definitionary, but it's called the dictionary because if they get you to say the tones a certain way, you won't pay attention to the meanings in the word while you say ignorant instead of ignorant. And then you go to say, well, people that's ignorant is just people that don't know. That's wrong, and it's right in the word. You must know something to ignore. How can I ignore the dog, lest the dog be there in my face? Heavyweight jamming all over the place. Okay. Now, let's, let's do a little revisit on Pac. And I'm doing this specifically for a brother from another mother who uh, I got a lot of love for, and I'm not even going to put him on blast. But you know this is for you, my brother. And it's all out of love because uh, you you brought up some things that needed to be brought up. And I, I didn't even touch on these things when I dealt with the pop situation. And how he was a victim 
brought into Project Janus, unbeknownst to him when he was just a baby boy. Might have even been birthed into it purposely. We don't know. Uh, see, the Rosemary's baby situation happens more often than we know. And uh, thanks to my man TK in St. Louis there for dropping a good one on us about uh, um, Anna Nicole. Anna, another forward, backward Project Janus. Anna Nicole, we know, um, <laughs> was in the rituals, in the sex rituals. They was loving to, to smash her out. And, of course, um, she had somewhat of a Rosemary's baby. You know, it's a question as to who baby it was and blah, blah, blah. In reality, you know that it was Jaja Gabor's uh, programmer, uh, 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 that no good devil who really impregnated her. And so we don't know who really impregnated Athene either. But we know that she ended up changing her child's name to something so outwardly demonic. Come on, come on, let's deal with it. People, oh, don't talk about Pac. You, you get to talking about Pac, people start aching below the belt. You shouldn't feel that way about no man. We should be able to talk and chop it up, especially when I was very respectful, okay? And uh, so much so that I left out certain things that really, by all rights, should have been put in. So I'm finna say them now. And it's for the benefit of overstanding, not for slandering. I, I You know, you don't know the man, how can you speak? That is denial 101. And denial is a river in Egypt. It shouldn't be in you. So let me just uh, run some of the things by you that, that we said. And then we're going to put this to bed because it'll be time to eat. And I will sup. All right. Okay, check it out. Okay. All right. All right. I said, uh, if you listen, I never said one bad word about the man. I called him a victim. When you overstand the program he was in, you don't have to know the man, my friend. See, all we have to know is how the program operates. Then you can look around you and you can see certain stars that, that would have to fall in line with this program it's a bloodline thing and it and it does go back to the bible and it's what god loved when we recognize things from ancient times that he tells us in the bible and we can see them in front of us because our eyes aren't uh, aren't veiled with uh, uh romanticism or idolatry of an individual he tells us in here about people sacrificing their children to the fire to malak in order for for them to gain what they perceive as success I did a whole video on that. That's the Messy Jackson video. I'm not going to go back down through those scriptures. They're in there. I did them all. So, um, you know, I know that's what God loves. It's for us to reveal these things because he's the one that revealed it unto me. There's no way I should know these things. I'm a Detroit public school product. All I did was a little lightweight jamming in the Detroit underground hip-hop community, and I knew a couple folks. But all of these other connections were made by the Most High for me by way of the Holy Spirit just to save something as raggedy as me so but I, but he's no respecter of person so if I'm able to be saved so are you but you have to be able to let go of some of the notions that you hold on to some of the things that you have been so used to and comfortably uh, um, uh, blindly used to believing okay it's time to let go of some of them things Pac in that interview made it clear his stance on the Illuminati and it's not what people be saying Except for my man Mishaya, he, 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 uh, he does deal with it, you know. And I appreciate that one true prophet. I know you call yourself that sometimes too. So I do appreciate that. Um, oh, okay. 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 Well, uh, okay. So one true prophet, he, he did deal with it. And I do appreciate him dealing with it. Uh, from the perspective of not romanticizing Pac, but let's really look at the fact that Pac had Hollywood on his job, he had the fashion industry on his job, and they don't need Pac. Pac need them. He needed them. They can create a Pac. They did it many times afterward. You know it. You know they did. It's a couple of them. I can't even remember their names. But before DMX, it was a couple of them. It was one from down south, a bald head dude. Somebody help me out. Real hip hop aficionados. Come on, chime in. But it was a bald head dude. Uh, I forget his name. He was really uh, pockish and trying to yell and be soldier. Whatever. You know, that 
style of Pac because Pac had different, many different styles true to the Gemini form and Project Janus shifting him through, from different personalities, from one personality to another, which is, a, which is a victimizing thing to do that to that man. Whoa, look at the chemtrails overhead. They drop a lot of chemtrails over Mansfield. It's big sky and I can always see them clearly. And I notice a correlation. Um, Lois J and I talked about chemtrails on the interview, but we didn't talk about the, the obvious application, the weather application. It seems to be a strange correlation between when they drop in the chemtrails like this and when the weather gets really odd. And it's odd because today is very warm and it had been ice cold. It was ice cold here uh, in Snow Ohio last night. But, um, and, well, the night before last, it was super cold. But today it was too warm for a jacket. It was windows down warm today in the 50s. But uh, this is Project Janus. And Project Janus is not something you're going to find obvious information out about. You just won't. You can search all you want and you will not find this information about Project Janus. But you will find it to be right and exact. Why? Because what Yeshua said was true. There would be things revealed in these days and times unto you only by the Holy Spirit. And there will be no confirmation by academia. If you need academia to confirm everything that, that said some of these things will not be proven. But the spirit in you will be moving and you'll feel it and you'll know. And that'll be your only proof of truth. It says test the spirit by the spirit. But you got to have a spirit first. You can't have the Holy Spirit if you got Google, Google eyes about Tupac. Or anybody else. For that matter. We have to be able to examine what's going on. What happened with that brother. If he's dead. If he's dead then that would have been an Illuminati kill because uh, of non-compliance. Because as long as you comply, you should be able to, to live your life, as long as you live a lie. But if he's dead, he would want us to drop the truth. And in that interview, that famous interview, uh, you know, you know, yeah, when I was in jail, the brothers were trying to tell me about the Illuminati, and, uh, you know, oh, oh the dollar. Uh -huh. He said, uh, who told you? The Pope? Right there! is skepticism he is right right there he's dissing all of the brothers who in the joint who learn these things behind the wall some brothers only learn these things what i'm able to teach y'all free and in the world some of them only learn it behind the wall and that was his disrespect to them the same way another black boule family line person damon wayans did the same thing the c-o-n spiracy i hated that because it was a way to try to do what they do in the day. That slander conspiracy theorists or slander truthers with the name conspiracy theorists. And Mel Gibson played his part in that too. So Pac was dissing when he, when he said that. And then even further, let's continue. Then he go off into it. He said, yeah, yeah, the Illuminati, yeah, I'm trying to kill that. No, not trying to kill the Illuminati. I'm trying to kill the fact that people think it's an Illuminati. Listen to the interview again. You're taking that out of context because you're seeing it with Google eyes. You're seeing Pac with a, a hero's eyes. Why? Because he was placed in front of you as a hero, as a false messiah at that. Which is why on the, uh, the, the week, one week away from Easter, they brought him back to life. Like a false messiah. Oh, well, Pac didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> if he didn't have anything to do with it, they wouldn't have been able to use his own lyrics. In doing it, come follow me. He's he, he's quoting Jesus in a gangster, twisted, demonic way. Because Pac was being walked in and out of as an air sign, as a Gemini, drinking and smoking. So Pac can drink and smoke and not be affected by the spirits. Boy, don't dis, don't do his memory a disservice like that. Tupac was a realist and might have been the realist, but he was struggling with this thing like Mike was struggling with this thing. And we need to pray for the for the brothers that's still out here now that we know are still living and struggling with this thing because some of it won't out. 
Like Pac wanted out. I believe Pac wanted out. I believe Mike wanted out. But they couldn't quite get it together to get up out of there. Pac looked like he fearing for his life in some of them shots. Some of them steel shots. And in the video shot where he's on the uh on the set of some movie and he's standing there smoking a square, awful paranoid. Know it, you can see it in his face. Cause he was a thinker and he was trying to get up out of there. But now let's 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 continue a little a little taste. We're gonna go too far. Okay. So I say, you say, uh, I say, uh, hold on. Okay. I say, uh, Lord have mercy. Okay. Trust me, it's Mo. Man, I didn't realize we had this much to say about it. Okay. All right. Finally. All right. I said, uh, okay. If you listen, I never said one bad word about the man. I called him a victim. Okay. Then I said, um. You know, it's, it's Project Janus, and it's just the truth. It goes along with accepting the things we were taught as a youth versus testing them out as men. When I became a man, I put away childish things. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I spake as a child. I looked up to Goofy Goobers and, and, and uh, uh, Mickey Mouses. But when I became a man, I started to see what, what, what time it really was. It's time for that. Stop romanticizing anybody from hip-hop music because hip-hop music was designed for mind control like all forms of music in the modern-day so-called industry, which is not an industry, but a mind control program called Project Umbrella slash Project Janus. Project Umbrella you'll find in the papers. Project Janus you will not. Okay. All right, it also goes along with the hip-hop fantasy videos I've done. People don't want to accept certain things about their heroes. Okay, that's in Please Listen to My Demonstration. Please Listen to My Demo. Demo short for what? Demonstration. 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 Right there in the word. The main thing being that our heroes are given to us and we should have no human heroes anyway. Jesus is my only hero. If Pac is dead, and it's odd that you would assume that because they wanted to go hard on me. Oh, you're talking about a dead man. Okay. And again, you know, I'm not putting you on blast because don't nobody know who I'm talking about. So this is out of love. But sometimes love got to be tough love to break through the barriers of denial, which is a spirit. And usually the strong man spirit anybody has is the spirit of denial. Once you can admit something, the first step to get into the hospital is admission. Till you go through admissions, you ain't finna get in the hospital. You won't get healing until you first admit. You have to first do admission. So, uh, you know, that denial spirit, sometimes you got to come against it in that manner to knock it down. Out of love. Please believe it. If Pac is dead and it's odd that you would assume that, then he would have loved what I did because it was telling the truth and all about the truth that had been hidden about him. So that, so that people would know what to pray for. Concerning his soul and the souls of others if he's still around if he's in Argentina or, or South America or wherever I know it is and so I understand that and there was no way he was in that system even by his own words Surrounding by devils and not affected by devilishness himself. Do you know about the chain? The one around his neck the fallen angel chain He had a fallen angel chain around his neck on that one flick where he comes from some room and the Holy Spirit tell me he comes from a ritual he came out of a ritual and he was pissed about it and he had on a red wings Detroit red wings and why why red wings red wings of what red wings of what it's not a cardinal it's already a, a team called the Cardinals red wings of what and it's a place called red wing shoes I saw one in uh, Atlanta and I was like, oh, somebody from Detroit must have must have uh, built that shoe store, I thought. Because I hadn't noticed no Red Wing store in Detroit. No Red Wing shoe store in Detroit. But then I get here, and I see a, a Red Wing shoe store, shoe store again. So this is a major thing. For, for it to be one down there and one here, happenstance. And neither one of them got nothing to do with Detroit. Red Wing don't have nothing to do with Detroit neither. But then it's got to do with what? The, the occult, the fallen angels. 
So he had on a Red Wings hookup, Red Wings uh, 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 jersey, and red bandana around his head. And we know you're supposed to be representing red like Suge and them. And we know that that's the vibration or the frequency of Shaitan. The um, reason that the Satanic Church picks those two colors, red and black, is because of the vibration that they vibrate. The car that gets pulled over the most is what? Red. The color for Aries, for murder, for war, red. We're not demonizing red. All of the colors belong to the Most High, Ahaya. All of the colors belong to, to Yah. However, we know red has a certain frequency. What Johnny Gill say with his gay self, with his Bible lay self. Put on your red dress. Come here. Red. Paint the town red. That means you about to fool. Right? You about to fool when you paint the town red. Red lipstick. These things are synonymous with a certain type of vibration, a certain type of energy. Okay? And it's nothing nice. So, so he come out of there. He's on fire. Red for fire. He comes out and he's on fire. Pac is on fire when he come out. And he spits at the cameraman. And he jump in the ride. And he's... Sticking his torso out the window, moving his torso in such a serpentine manner. And you love that. You're like, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a revolutionary for me. You fell for the okie doke. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're not alone. Lots of people fell for the okie doke. Why? Because when you're in such desire and need for a hero, guess what? They will supply one for you. It's in their writings. It's in their writings. It's New World Order 101. In order to keep the people tame and to control them, you have to give them a hero. And make sure that that hero is controlled by you. As long as the hero is controlled by you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Certain things that people will never do lest the hero say do it. So he's talking about a political party and, and, and when he's going to start, blah, blah, blah. And you mean to tell me Pac is game goofy enough to think that he's going to just thug life his way into a political party, right? And do what he want to do and not play the game. Pac was well learned. He knew better than that. And then it's funny too when you hear, I had a, uh, my brother Keith had given me a CD of some interviews with Pac when he had first came on the scene and all he was talking about was Panther Fuss. That's it. All he was talking about was Panther Fuss. Uh, uh, his, his roles in community organizing and all of that, that was his only fixation. He sounded like a different man. You might have been listening to Fred Hampton or Fred Hampton Jr. talk. Then you fast forward on that same CD and it's got later interviews of Pac. And he sound like a totally changed individual. Because he was. Stop romanticizing people, man. You know, but at the same time, we're not villainizing them neither. We standing in the neutral place of looking for the truth. I don't have a dog in a fight. I'm not related to Pac. Except by this. But guess what? If I can talk about Messy Jesse and Al Sharp Tongue, if I can reveal that Dr. King's real name was not Dr. King and that it's some falsehoods involved in that whole uh, a glorification of him, you got to remember where you at. We're in the land of the... <laughs> we're in the land of the Mason. We're in the land of, of deception. Home of the slave. And it's all about trickery. So anybody that they putting it up in front of your face like they all good, you should you should be skeptical of. You should look twice at that. Pot's writings is in the universities of this land. The very same universities that produced the crawling uh, uh, energies of the hippie movement. Do what you like. Man, do as thou wilt. I cannot lose with what I use, the Holy Spirit. That's got to be your guide. Not what you think, not what you feel. Your feelings will betray you, Luke. I could have gone in and been insulting about a man I did not know, but I did not. I was very respectful because I know people feel some type of way about him the way they are programmed to feel. You have to rise above that and maybe watch the video again without emotion and just use your logic and let your Holy Spirit be your guide. None of what I say can be proven on that level. But for some reason, it just rubs people the wrong way if they listen to it with the emotional ear. 
Okay, that rubbed people the wrong way. I see a lot of things can't be proven. Never heard a peep from the brother. But when I spoke on this guy, it, it touched a personal note. We got to be cautious of that. That's part of behavior modification programming. That people feel that way about Michael. That people feel that way about Pac. That people feel that way about Prince. People feel that way about Elvis. People feel that way about John Wayne. He was a hero the most, but he never meant. So that's what we got to be about everybody. God has no respect of persons. Lesane was a hero the most. And I am a family man, so I had no desire to diss him. But his story had to be told. The culprit would have been his mother if you paid attention to the theory in the video, not him. He was the victim. Either way, I appreciate your comments, your criticism, and your love. I would also appreciate your careful scrutiny before you make assumptions. You can't jump the gun, especially when I'm, you know, I, I'm not the dullest knife in the drawer. Okay, I try to pick my words wisely so as not to offend. If you notice, sometimes I, you, you might feel me wanting to, wanting to cuss them out. And I don't do that because it's bigger fish to fry. And at the end of the day, don't let your good be evil spoken of. So in order to get your point across, sometimes it's better to use honey than vinegar. So I know how to make it sweet. Okay? My intention is not to... Uh, disrespect but sometimes we got to break through barriers and to break through a barrier you can't tap on it lightly all the time sometimes you gotta fuck that thing and knock it down that's knocking down the barriers knocking down the demons of denial that keep us from seeing obvious truths okay uh, then I said uh, you know you talk to text had butchered that what I said, talk to text does not like my black scent. It'd be saying all kind of things. I said, I didn't say that. But anyway, uh, it was overstood, you know. I said, it's really sad that Mike, Elvis, Prince, Pac, and these other great artists, Bob Marley, Marvin Gaye, were under government control and scrutiny. I saw something on Bob Marley's history some time ago. I mean, this was a long time ago. This Where I was living at, at this time, this was at least a decade ago. And it was showing his history, and it was some funny business to that. A white man, and you, you know, his mama, and some kind, some kind of funny business in there. Another Rosemary's Baby situation. We're looking at a, a, a nation of stars. That's why Tila Tequila said so many of them are related. Who have been fathered by Illuminists. And the children are put up in front of us as the stars and the entertainers today. The children have been traumatized and mind controlled in such a manner so that they are now hollowed out empty vessels for old ones for gin for extra dimensional entities to walk in okay we know that all of these people mike elvis prince park and these other great artists bob marley marvin gay were under government control and scrutiny see the cointel pro papers see uh project umbrella it's admitted they were followed by the alphabet boys. Why were they followed by the alphabet boys? Why follow them? Why not just smoke them if they're so dangerous to the system? If Pac was dangerous to the system, they would have X'd him out. They could have X'd him out a number of ways. Oh, they assassinated his character. Not much. It was as much good in the news on Pac as it was bad. Pac got as much good publicity as he did bad. All from the same machine. That's to create the controversy. Wow. Of Project Janus, the duality, the Gemini thing. That's what that was for. They don't one side you. When they took Kwame Kilpatrick out, they did not Project Janus him. All you heard was bad word. That was a character assassination, not what happened to Pop. Let's keep heavyweight jamming. Why were they followed by the Alphabet Boys when they could have just killed them if they were total threats, but they weren't? They were controlled opposition. Look up the term. I'm sure you're aware of how that works in politics. Why wouldn't there be controlled opposition in the music and entertainment business? Which shapes our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our attitudes toward each other, toward race, and toward the world that we live in. I said, you've inspired me to do a part three, my man, LOL, and bring a little more clarity. Okay. Then, then you know, it was starting to make connection with him. He said, you know, he agreed with what I was saying. 
uh, you know, and I said, you know, he fought the system, you know, and then he admitted, he said, well, you know, I agree with what you're saying, make a lot of sense, he said, but I do feel a certain type of way when people talk about it, that's a man, that's a man right there, you, you a man, you a man's man, that you can admit that, some people can't admit that, they don't know why it is, they don't like it, it just, <clears throat> it touched them some kind of funny way, and they feel some type of way, rich homie Kwan, that told him, I know you're sharp, but he still had to deal with it from within. Pop, no matter what changes he wanted to make, he had to make them changes from within. Because he was in it. Full-fledged, he was torn. If you didn't notice the contradictions coming from out of his own mouth, you may be missing some of the not-so-popular points about Pop. Pop was one of the most contradicting artists since KRS-One. He took the title from KRS-One. Karras one was the most contradicting rapper that it was. He was known for that. Self-destruction. And then he jump up on the stage and, and knock Prince being PM'd on weak butts up off the stage. Bum rush them. Terrorize them guys. You know. Stop the violence. But they bum rush the show. For sure. But yeah, Pop, Pop took that title from him. So let's not romanticize or phantom. Yeah, yeah, because one minute pockets, dear mama, and the next, you wonder why they call you, you wonder why they call you B. You know, one minute he's father, sisters, the next minute he tearing the sisters down. One minute he telling the brothers to, you know, use their minds and be smart, and the next minute he, tell, you know, when we ride on my enemies, you know, bipolarity, like a mug. Are you stable? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And you know you know that was the, the, uh, uh, a show enough telltale sign of instability in the mind. One song this way, one song that way. And you listening to it, one song after the other. Going through all the emotions with pop. You drinking and smoking too. And next thing, you know, you walking around just as Project Janice thought as he was. Paranoid and everything else. Confused. God is not the author of confusion. Let's not romanticize or fantasize about him. It does his memory a disservice. God is ready to reveal the untold parts of his story. The parts that the elite do not want told to the street. You cannot become a Hollywood darling. Nor a fashion icon. Remember Versace. Versace, 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 Versace. Medusa had on me like. Okay. He was down with him. Not to mention a top selling and top charting artist. How can you be that without being in the game? Consider the lyrics to So Many Tears, for example. He tells it himself. But again, he was a victim to a program that he was put in from the time he was a child. And he is not alone. It goes back to the Old Testament. And the Most High gave us his example to learn something from. Not to idolize him blindly, but to see the truth. That he tried to leak out that he was a part of a government program. An extension of a program designed primarily for the Panthers extinction originally. He wanted to reverse the curse while at the same time enjoying the same. He was enjoying the fame, the fortune, the money. You know he was. He rapped about it. It was in his nature to do so. To come from the background that you come from and then receive that level of power. First of all, power is more seducing than money then money and then fame 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 and power go hand in hand fame is real intoxicating okay so while at the same time he was enjoying these things and then uh, rebelling against them simultaneously so was he not a double-minded man doesn't that present the problem of a double-minded man was he not unstable in all his ways because of that and we ain't talking about the fact he made money and blah blah blah. He had people to take care of that. He was unstable in his way, his ways, his ways. We we all know that. Yet again, it was no fault of his because all of the kids that are taken through these mind control programs end up being unstable in all their ways. Yet again, it was no fault of his, and as brilliant as he was, he sought a way out. And tried to tell us about it. Dudes just want to perform. They just want to rap. You know. Uh, they never imagine. 
or sing, you know, they just want to rap or sing. They never imagined they would be brought into a government program, but that's what it is. I knew proof that was my buddy and he told about it. Pac was not alone in trying to tell. Other people tried to tell. Proof, proof was making a movie at the time of his death called The Devil Made Me Do It. I was in it. I was in a scene uh, or, or two as an extra. I was in at least three scenes. Straight to video never came out because he could not finish it because he was dead. But he had told. He had told groups of people around Detroit about what they really do. Thank God for that. All praise is due to the Most High Yah for that. Proof is a martyr. Okay? You know, you want to say Pac, 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 because Pac told, Proof told. And he told some heavy duty jamming. Yes, he did. Proof went on ahead and told you about how they placed the master tape in the center of the conference room table and pray over it. And they prayed over Devil's Night. I got a video on it. You want to see it? Check it out. I ain't going to go into that right now. Because I got to eat. But Pac was indeed, excuse me, Pac was not alone in trying to tell. Michael Jackson tried to tell. Others tried to tell. But Pac was indeed being pulled in two different directions, two different ways, like Project Janus is designed to make you do. The comments he made on the Illuminati that everyone quotes, they totally take out of context. If one listens without an idolizing ear, you can hear clearly in that interview that he does not want you to believe there is an Illuminati. He tries to convince you that it's something that only brothers in jail talk about. Heavy duty. He clearly says that's just another way to try to keep us down. What? Not that the Illuminati themselves are keeping us down, but that believing that there is such a thing keeps us down. Did he really believe that as learned as he was, as many books as he read? As much as he had studied Machiavelli, who was a member of the Illuminati, and he named himself after a member of the Illuminati. Just like Jay-Z did, so if we're going to charge Jay-Z for it, guess what? Heavyweight jamming. Read Machiavellian literature. Don't let XXL or, or, or Rap Pages or The Source tell you about what Machiavelli meant because Tupac chose it because this. Blah, blah, blah. They all in on the scam. So they're going to make Machiavellian literature sound good to you. So when you read it, you're going to read it with a shaded mind, a clouded mind. Because you're clouded, first of all, from idolizing Tupac. And then secondly, when you look at this man's satanic literature, you're going to see it from Pac's perspective. Get off his job. Not that the Illuminati themselves are keeping us down, but that believing that there is such a thing keeps us down. Did he really believe that as learned as he was? These are all things I could have said, but out of respect for how people are so emotional about him, I kept a lot of this stuff out. Now let us consider Machiavelli. Like Jay-Z naming himself after Rockefeller, both men are historically known to be luminists, to be illuminists, elitists, and devil worshippers. That's right. The figure Machiavelli was too. If we read his writings for ourselves and don't allow for the source or for rap pages, or for XXL to tell us who Machiavelli was, we'd find that out easily. But there was as much pro-propaganda as there was anti concerning Pop, which shows us that the elite were not truly against Tupac because they control the media. And when they want to shut you down, they Kwame Kilpatrick you. But this has really been a blessing. And this will be the next video. And I will give you a big shout out for causing me to think much deeper than I did before. Steel sharp and steel, and we keeping it real. And I appreciate that and love that about you, my brother. In a minute, thanks again. You know, then he said, well, what did he finish that lineup with? Unplug him to keep us down. He was saying something bigger. That in, that entire part of the interview pretty much put the K to Illuminati. No, he said he was killing that, meaning the idea of brothers believing in such a thing. Listen again. You know, I heard the whole thing. At first, like everybody else, I heard what I wanted to hear. A black champion railing and talking against the elite. But listen again. The dollars, uh, uh, the dollar bills, uh, uh, uh. how do they know? How does he know? Who told him? The Pope? That is a statement drenched in skepticism, my brother. Check it out again. Listen again without the perceived notion, without the spell that you're listening to some black hero who, who, who escaped through the cracks and still gets publicity and promotion. Uh, crooked ideals and all all the rest, right? He said, he meant it keeps you from 
No, he meant it keeps you down, ignorant from getting goals accomplished. God willing, in five years, if I'm still alive. Yeah, that's right. He said that part. I just came from doing a prison ministry yesterday. One of the brothers in there was talking with me about the Illuminati and about false religion. He said he, he said how he learned what he knew in jail. A lot of brothers learn these things in jail. Okay. Pac was making a disrespectful statement to all of those brothers, just like Damon Wayans from the famous Wayans family who, who find who they find their parents. Somebody. Somebody. Homework lesson. Who was their parents? Put them all in the hookup. Put them all in the game. Right? But just like Damon Wayne's character did in the In Living Color skit. Come on. C-O-N-spiracy. Yes, he was speaking about his political aspirations. And you think he was dumb enough to think he could aspire to political heights without having major backing behind him? He knew who his backing was. You didn't. Heavyweight jamming. Love y'all. Shalom. I'm, I'm ready to eat. Be cool.